Hey viewers, Fernando from SkyFi Audio. Today I've got a pretty neat uh, Techniques uh, CD player, um, one of the earlier machines. Um, model number specifically is a uh, SLP1200. It's pretty unique. It's obviously, uh, uh, the form factor is totally different from, from what we're used to. Um, and it, it was sort of aimed at the broadcast resi market. So it's really like a high-end residential player with a lot of broadcast features. I imagine Techniques was trying to make a machine that would kind of skirt the two, you know, kind of cover both worlds. Um, at a time where, you know, CD players were still finding their way. So the, the number designation is obviously reminiscent of the SL1200 turntable, which is, you know, Technique's probably most famous piece they ever made. Uh, a DJ um, slash broadcast oriented turntable. So they kind of capitalized on the naming convention and, and followed suit into a machine that is pretty unique in not just the design and the aesthetics, the layout, but also the features. It's got some really interesting things on it. And I was gonna maybe go over all of them um, in this video for you. So form factoring is odd. It looks like a console, sort of like an either a typewriter or an early computer. Uh, it is a top loading unit, meaning that the, there's no drawer as uh, you would have in a conventional CD player. The disc is loaded, um, top loaded through um, a, a system where the magnet that holds the, let me see, uh, right here, uh, essentially the puck that holds the CD in place is attached to the top door, which is interesting. A lot of top loading CD players have a puck that you've got to drop in place this was a unique design where it was all built into the one. And the first thing I noticed is that while the unit is playing, you can't hit the open button, which is kind of like a nice broadcast feature so you don't get yourself into trouble while you're on the air or doing something important like a recording. So this is locked out unless the machine is stopped. If I hit play right now, the machine is now playing, and that is inoperable. So cool feature right off the bat. Uh, on the top, we've got this interesting display panel. It's talking about Class AA, which is their processing type. VC4 amplifier system, just a bunch of marketing nonsense. Uh, and then the layout here, this is sort of like a block diagram of how their filter system works. Their Class AA uh, DDA converter. And then we go on to I don't know, FFL, another designation, probably some sort of fluorescent display that we're really proud of. And then a really nice, large, and bright uh, fluorescent display. So great for older eyes and folks who have a hard time seeing little things. Really bright, great display on it. A couple of um, features at the bottom, and then moving on to, I don't know, I guess they're bragging this is digital. And then a remote sensor seems to be built into this glass. And then the emphasis, which is uh, um, sort of some sort of equalization present on some CDs. The other sort of very notable thing is the presence of this slider control. This is the same slider you would find, at least in appearance, to the SL1200 turntable that lets you sort of manage the pitch of the music. And this lets you s increase pitch by 8% and drop it by 8%. And that just means that as the CD is playing, which we have now, we can actually, as long as this pitch control button is enabled, we can actually affect the speed of the CD. You kind of hear it speed up and slow down, just like a record would. And this lets you sort of synchronize the music, at least the beat, with another song that may be playing. So if you're mixing or, or fading between one song to another song, this uh, feature allows you to change or vary the speed of the song to match the subsequent song, so that when you introduce it, people are dancing or someone's carrying the beat with their foot, it is essentially uninterrupted. So more of a DJ than a broadcast feature, but again, very, very cool. The other thing you notice right off the bat is how quickly this machine accesses the tracks. And again, it's another broadcast uh, desirable feature is you want to be able to get playing fast. You don't want to sit there waiting for top of track to be read and all this other slow process. Um, you want to hit play and get music almost immediately. 
and this machine does just that. To go from stop to play, it's probably the shortest time I've ever seen on a CD player. Um, so deliberately designed that way. Other cool features, check this out. The display itself, the numeric display, get a good angle for you. Gives you tenths of seconds. I've never seen that on a CD player. Super cool feature. If I stop it right there at 10, it, uh, 10 seconds, 10.6 seconds to be exact. Um, this numbers here uh, illustrate which track is playing. Right now we're on track one. If I fast forward to track three, you'll see that queue up. Track three is now blinking, so the blinking track is the one that is in action. And again, if I go track skip and go back to track one, and right away we'll hear music. All right, another cool feature is the direct track access. This is a little more common, but still not found in CD players of later times. Uh, this allows you to essentially do a direct track. So I go hit five, play, and I can go right to track five. I can do the same thing, one, zero, seven, play, and it goes right to track seven. On top of that, as you know, there are a few seconds extra between tracks, and this auto cue button here allows you to essentially skip the silent section of the track and go right to where the music is. So as you know, I, right now I am paused. I am paused on track seven. So you can see here, I've got the pause light on, track seven skewed, and I am 0.3 seconds into the song because that's where the music starts. So the machine has gone and figured out where exactly the music starts, not the track. So that when I hit play, I get immediate results right there. So if I go to track five, I will get the exact same result. All right, another neat feature is the, um, over here, um, headphone uh, output with a slider. These are usually rotary knobs. This has got a pretty decent headphone uh, jack built right into it. And let me see what else. Power is obviously here in the left corner, out of the way where you're not going to hit it by mistake. Another feature is the, um, the search. The search is pretty neat. Um, this wheel here allows you to essentially advance the CD to a very specific spot while you're listening to the music. That's the neat part about this, right? Because I am under play right now, I can actually go to a very specific place and hear the music at that particular part of the song. And then you can kind of hold right there and then hit play and continue from that point on. And that is adjustable by two different speeds, a fast and a slow. If I go to slow, I can actually affect and back out. I'm at five seconds, four seconds, three, with pretty good precision. And the second I let go, it picks up again. I can also pause it and just hold at that specific time. Pretty neat stuff. Okay. Other than that, there's some very basic uh, programming in case you wanted to create a playlist or let's say you're creating a tape out of a CD, you're able to program into memory a specific sequence of songs. That's pretty neat. Uh, I think up to 20 songs you can actually jump back and forth between tracks and also the specific times within tracks. So if you took the care to figure out your ideal playlist out of a CD, uh, this could help you transfer it to a tape deck. All right, some more buttons here. We've got, uh, let's see. Obviously the, the lapse in the track is, is displayed right here. We've got elapsed time versus actual time, elapsed versus remaining, and track versus total. Those are self-explanatory. All right, I think that covers most of the buttons in the front. It is a pretty heavy unit. I think this must be at least 35 pounds. I think maybe 17 ki kilograms or something around that. Very well built. They use some sort of fancy plastic that Techniques has patented over the years. Uh, the, feet, the feet are exactly the same feet as the uh, Cell 1200 turntable. A nice little sort of touch and an homage towards the turntable. 
Um, and on the back, it's very simple. We've got very few things here. We've got a line output and only RCAs. Uh, subsequent models, I think there was an X designation, uh, so it would be the SLP1200X added balanced audio cables, which is really what you'd want for a broadcast quality piece. You wouldn't be dealing with RCA, so uh, I was surprised that they even bothered releasing this unit with single-ended outputs. There's a wire remote that also for good for a studio setting where you don't want to be messing around with batteries, and maybe the, the remote itself sits at the console with the rest of the mixing equipment. The subcode, I imagine that is to display uh, some sort of timing, uh, statistic, or maybe track, or whatever. If you know what this is, uh, do chime in on the comments, please. I am not 100% sure. And then with manufacturing date, 1989. And uh, let's see, it's a 60-hertz, 120-volt machine, and a serial number starting with the FI9. All right, so um, the manual is pretty basic. Um, it does go into detail with the auto queuing and the auto spacing and all the other functions. Um, nothing great. There's no particular uh, information on servicing. This does display there. It is a lockable transport, which is great. Uh, if you're looking to buy one, this will ensure that it travels properly. And the connections are standard. Yeah, Subcode number three. Let's look this up. Uh, compact disk subcode is a signal is delivered to the socket. The socket is provided for a system interface with future components. In other words, they didn't really know what to do with it yet. Um, illustration of the control panel and the search wheel. And the different types of modes and playing, etc. So a, a decent manual. Uh, at least it's a good size and it's pretty readable. It's, it's before they did all these international versions with 30 different languages. So it's pretty nice. Um, quick look at uh, the vintage knob. This is uh, my favorite website for this sort of uh, equipment. My kudos out to them for, for having such an amazing resource for us. Uh, the vintage knob.org is the website. And here it is the SLP1200 is this particular model. The X was the balanced, and the P was a later version. Um, so, yes, uh, I think I've covered most of what they say here. Uh, there is a mention that the pitch control can do plus minus 8%, so that number that we saw on the pitch slider is in fact a percentage. Uh, the isolation, the rubber isolation techniques called it made of TN uh, TNRC material. Techniques non-resident compound, essentially just plastic. Uh, then they talk about the class AA circuitry. Uh, oh, and it does have, in fact, Burr Brown uh, digital app converters, digital to analog converters of PCM 54 HPs. Um, X version was later AMOR broadcast with XLRs, BNCs, and then the SL SLP 1200P is a broadcast version. Pitch control reduced to a secondary function on the top panel, the right fader becoming a proper fader and the display moved to the right. So quite a bit of a different machine on the, well, this, that link didn't work. Um, but anyway, here's a little peek at the plastics that they use on the inside. There's a laser with uh, laser guides. That's pretty neat. Looks like uh, maybe a two head laser there. Uh, and that's about it. The, um, thanks for watching. This has been uh, a quick video from SkyFi Audio. Uh, you can visit us online at skyfiaudio.com where we've got tons of really cool vintage gear. Um, not sure if this machine is going to go up for sale, but um, there are certainly other cool machines on there for you to look at. Uh, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. It'll keep us motivated. And um, thanks for watching. Truly appreciate it.